this week on Africa Weekly. We focus on the African migrants sleeping rough in Brussels' main park. We visit Namibia, where tourism revenue is on the rise. And finally to Lagos, where the megacity's dirty walls are being transformed by graffiti artists. But first, a summary of the stories that made the headlines this week. Kenya's opposition boycotted the opening session of parliament following the annulment of the result of Kenya's general election last month. Opposition leader Raila Odinga insists that he will not participate in the fresh presidential vote set for October 17 unless the conditions laid out by the opposition are met. Meanwhile, at a rally, Kenya's deputy president, William Ruto, said the Supreme Court had been manipulated by con men. They conspired through treachery, conmanship and deceit. The Nigerian government and aid agencies are making efforts to improve sanitation after 14 people died of a cholera outbreak in the northeast of the country, with 186 total suspected cases. Most of the victims live in a camp for people displaced by Boko Haram violence, on the outskirts of Maiduguri, the capital of Borno, which is the epicenter of the jihadist insurgency. The disease has also been on the rise in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the UN says millions of cases are registered every year. South Africa's Supreme Court opened an appeal hearing this week to decide whether to reinstate 783 dropped corruption charges against President Jacob Zuma. The latest of a string of political and legal scandals to dog Zuma, these charges are related to a 1990s arms deal. The president and other government officials are accused of taking kickbacks from the $5 billion purchase of fire jets, patrol boats and other arms manufactured by five European firms. But the president has always insisted that he is innocent. And in South Africa's KwaZulu-Natal province, the annual reed dance ceremony took place, which celebrates virginity. The tradition was instituted by the Zulu king in 1984 and is a symbol of Zulu and Swazi culture. Every year in early spring, tens of thousands of virgin young women dance topless in front of the Zulu king. But the practice remains controversial because it is meant to encourage young women to remain chaste in a country where the rate of AIDS is one of the highest in the world. <laughs> Egyptian archaeologists have uncovered the tomb of a goldsmith dedicated to the god Amun and the mummies of a woman and her two children, dating back to the New Kingdom between the 16th and 11th century BC. The tomb of Amun's goldsmith, Amenemhat, contained a sculpture carved into a recess of him seated beside his wife with a portrait of their son painted between them. The team also discovered 150 small funerary statues carved in wood, clay and limestone. This volunteer kitchen has given out free meals to migrants here in Brussels every day for the past five months. But the volunteers started feeding homeless migrants more than a year ago in the Calais camp known as the Jungle. That camp was cleared last year, but they worry a similar shantytown is growing here in the Belgian capital. At first when we gave out meals there were 200 people, now we're at 650, it's getting critical. In the end the migrants don't have any solutions, they're living in a park, they're lost and they have nowhere else to go. A lot of people say it's a Belgian problem, that it's a problem for certain countries, but really it's a European problem. Most of the migrants here are from Sudan and Eritrea and want to reach the UK. But after months of travelling through Libya and into Europe, some migrants just want to be able to stay in Belgium. I'm suffering. Suffering too much. And not only me, I know all my friends, they are suffering too much. For me personally, I don't want to go to England just right now because my journey is very tough and I pay a lot of, I pay a lot because suffering. And right now I came here in Belgium, just I want to, you know, have asylum. Yassine and his team have given out 620 meals this evening as the migrants get ready to sleep outside for another night. Medical charities like Médecins du Monde are among those calling for the authorities to set up temporary housing for those living in the park. There are possible solutions. There are empty buildings right next to the park and there are groups which could help, like the Red Cross or similar. So somewhere all the tools are there to put a solution in place. It just needs the political will. And at the moment, the hold-up is at the federal level. The Belgian government is yet to intervene in the crisis. 
The volunteers say they'll continue feeding the migrants in need until a solution is found. Anouk and her husband are in Namibia on their honeymoon and the young Dutch couple don't regret their choice of destination. In the span of a few days, they've slept under the stars in the desert, taken a scenic ride in a hot air balloon and been kayaking with seals. Jan Mankies has been taking tourists kayaking in Balfus Bay for the last 20 years and business is as busy as ever. The tourism has grown over the years and I think more and more people enjoy doing something more activity way and again with kayaking it's easy to do it that way and getting so close to nature. Namibia's dramatic landscape and plentiful wildlife are key draws attracting hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. Over the past decade tourist numbers have increased steadily, growth aided by the weak local currency. I've mainly done Asia which is much cheaper in general. Africa, especially Tanzania, Kenya, are known to be very expensive destinations. But I think that Namibia has not yet reached the level of those kind of countries. I think it's relatively affordable. Kormanskop, a ghostly abandoned former mining town dating back to the German colony, is among Namibia's most visited attractions. Tourism generates around 1 billion euros annually, the country's third largest source of income, surpassed only by mining and fishing. The government considers tourism as a key to diversifying the sluggish economy, but many industry professionals believe much more investment is needed. There's times and I cannot get you accommodation for love or money. Um, we, we have very distinct seasonality, but even in what would be shoulder season, uh, we've had huge difficulty trying to get confirmed uh, the kind of accommodation, the kind of experiences that people are looking for. With a population of only two and a half million people stretched over 800,000 square kilometers, Namibia has plenty of room for more visitors. Though some might argue that the unspoiled natural beauty and the wide open spaces it offers are exactly what makes it such an idyllic tourist destination. It's a drizzly weekday morning in Nigeria's mega city Lagos and Osa 7 is working on his latest fresco. The pioneering graffiti artist has been working on this piece for several days, mixing spray paint with acrylics. It's his mission to bring colour to these concrete walls and encourage other artists to use the city as an urban canvas. We're just the spearhead of this, the movement is coming, you know. There are a whole lot of other graffiti artists, upcoming guys that, you know, would you know, create that scene proper. We're just going to spearhead it and do the best that we can to, you know, put Lagos graffiti or Nigerian graffiti on the map. But Lagos's authorities haven't given graffiti the green light. Instead, they've commissioned well-known street artists to paint in designated areas, forcing unknown artists to find other spots. There are public places that you don't have to, you have to be careful how you go about it. And there are some, there are some parks that it looks interesting when you when you do your painting there because people come around to play basketball and football. So I think art is very, very interesting in places like that. With more exposure to the public, graffiti has gained more acceptance. Teachers at this Lagos school are even encouraging their pupils to become street artists themselves to liven up the walls of their school. With the schools here especially, um, a lot of their walls are just blank, they're just plain walls and we don't think that that is enough inspiration for them and we found that art um, is a, an amazing medium of expression. It gives the kids um, so much excitement to come to school. Um, it's also, we paint educational stuff, so it's stuff that they can, they can read and it resonates with them and they understand it. The graffiti scene in Lagos lags far behind global metropolises like New York, but with a little encouragement from the authorities, the mega city hopes to bring a little colour to its otherwise drab facade. Several thousand football fans in Mogadishu cheered on their teams in the first nighttime match since chaos descended on the Somali capital nearly 30 years ago. The tournament for 16 and 18 year olds at the Kona Stadium was played under tight security because of the constant threat posed by the Shabab Islamist group. Thank you. 
Next week, we take you to Liberia, where we look at President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf's impact on women in politics in the West African country. That's all from us at Africa Weekly. Until next week. Thank you.